After the scale of the disaster at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant was realized, it became clear that mankind was gonna have to deal with its consequences for many decades to come. The scientists had never before encountered such a technogenic release of radionuclides. How are they gonna demolish the old houses, and how will they remove the remaining nuclear fuel? Watch this video to the end to learn what's gonna happen to the town of Pripyat and the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in the future. The 1970s were marked by a boom in the nuclear power industry. The atomic energy industry rated among the safest and most promising. It was highly praised and a golden era was predicted for it, but the accident that occurred at the Chernobyl NPP in 1986 demonstrated to the entire world that the gold was not to be messed with. The worldwide euphoria faded away. But nowadays, more than 30 years later, the global interest for the peaceful atom is back. Despite the titanic efforts exerted by different countries to implement alternative energy projects, nuclear power plants have been attracting more and more attention from investors as of late. Under the conditions of the present day development of technologies and the constantly increasing energy consumption, most states just do not have any cheap or efficient competitors for the peaceful atom. But in the context of the nuclear boom resurgence, the Chernobyl zone, like a black hole on the map of Europe, continues to suck money out of Ukraine and the other donor countries, helping it to turn the giant radioactive waste burial site where billions of dollars have been buried into an environmentally safe facility. Decontamination of the territory. Now, one of the government's plans is to purify the territory of the Chernobyl zone from the residual radioactive contamination. It's also planned to eliminate a great number of dump sites that had been created during the rectification of the accident's consequences. As of today, the destroyed power unit of the number four NPP has been covered with a new sarcophagus, the so-called new shelter facility. This structure takes care of the greater part of the radioactive emission and is going to serve for about 100 years. It's planned to dismantle the reactor completely within the nearest 100 years and to process all the radioactive substances located inside the fourth power unit. The adjacent territory, including the town of Pripyat, is going to remain a restricted area for quite a long time. But experts believe that most of the territory located away from the power plant can be recultivated. Land recultivation is a package of works aimed at restoration of the soil productivity and the economic value of the disturbed lands. In simple terms, recultivation is the purification of lands after a chemical or radioactive contamination. Recultivation technologies are well known all over the world. The Ukrainian government declared many times that they were ready to invest substantial amounts of money into the Chernobyl zone to return it to the agricultural or industrial place it used to be. For example, land decontamination was performed in Japan in the vicinity of the Fukushima plant. This is a very complicated and expensive process. To decontaminate one square meter, it is necessary to remove 10 centimeters of soil, which amounts to about 100 kilograms from each square meter. As a result, tons of radioactive soil were removed. The Japanese government evaluated the work on decontamination of the lands in the vicinity of Fukushima at $10 billion at that time. Ukraine will hardly be able to commit such considerable financial resources to that. Therefore, it's most probable that the Ukrainian government will raise funds from all the countries that are interested in the decontamination of those lands. But there are many problems behind all those great plans, which we are going to discuss further. Demolition of Pripyat it's a matter of concern for many people what's gonna happen to the town of Pripyat. A few years ago, first deputy head of the National Agency for the Exclusion Zone Management, Dmitry Bobro, stated that the town had to be dismantled. Government officials put forward arguments proving that it's too expensive to keep it as a memorial. For the buildings to stand for so many decades to come, it would be necessary to spend enormous amounts of money on repairs. Now, the buildings in Pripyat are exposed to the malice of weather. Water penetrates into the mortar cracks in winter, then it freezes and destroys the concrete foundations. If the buildings begin to collapse, the winds can carry the radioactive dust to the territories where people live and work. For example, a collapsing apartment block will raise a pillar of radioactive dust that can be carried anywhere by the wind. A radioactive cloud can be formed and reach as far as Kiev if there's the north wind and Belarus if the wind moves south. There can be such a concentration of radionuclides that some districts will even have to be evacuated. There was even an idea to knock down the town using pinpoint explosions and to rebury it. 
it, but this method cannot be employed to demolish the buildings as there will be about as much radioactive dust raised as in the case of the building collapsing on its own. To prevent such a scenario, experts believe that the best option would be to start dismantling them with the aid of construction machinery. In their opinion, the process would be more controllable and safer than leaving the apartment blocks as they are and waiting for them to begin to collapse for natural reasons. If they start demolishing Pripyat, it will first of all have a negative impact on the tourism that's been picking up stream recently. The exclusion zone of the Chernobyl NPP was ranked the most exotic place for tourism in the world by Forbes in 2009. Even foreigners began to sneak there illegally. They brought specialized tools to climb over the fence surrounding Pripyat and evade the checkpoints in this way, much like the characters of the Stalker game. The premier broadcast of the Chernobyl series in 2019 promoted the development of tourism in the area once again. The ghost town must be the foremost attraction of the Chernobyl zone now, and if the town is gone, the tourists will be gone too. But it has to be admitted that if Pripyat's not demolished within the next 20 years, the town will fall into ruin all on its own. So if you haven't yet visited it for any reason but are eager to, do travel there while you still have an opportunity to see it all for yourself and to immerse yourself in the era of radioactive apocalypse. The Hazardous Reactor Despite having been covered with an arc, the damaged reactor still poses a threat. The old sarcophagus erected over the destroyed fourth power unit immediately after the accident was actually a giant concrete box. It was constructed hastily. The structure, comprised of 400,000 cubic meters of concrete mix and 7,000 tons of metal, was completed within 206 days. Despite that, it was able to ward off the propagation of radiation that was destroying it from inside for more than 30 years. A short while ago, the destruction of the old sarcophagus sarcophagus became evident. The hanging panels of the engine house roof at the fourth power unit collapsed in 2013. Approximately 180 tons of fuel that is turned into congealed fuel containing corium still remains inside the destroyed reactor, causing the radiation levels inside to exceed all permissible levels by hundreds of times. Even now, the leak tightness of the structure has always been far from perfect. The total area of cracks and fissures in the roof and walls was 1,000 meters square as of the moment of its commissioning. Therefore, radiation leaks from under the first sarcophagus were not unusual. The safe operation life of the shelter's erected metal structures was 30 years, which means it has long since expired. In addition to that, there was a hazard of flood in Chernobyl in 2013. In mid-April, the water level in the Pripyat River rose suddenly. There was a danger of ingress of radioactive substances into the Dnieper River. It turns out that while the damaged fourth power unit is there, there will always be risks of some emergency situations. To prevent all the risks associated with the damaged reactor, Actor, it has to be dismantled stage by stage. The huge protective arc was erected over the fourth power unit, partly owing to that. The arc, the new shelter, or the new safe confinement, became the Earth's largest movable above ground structure. It is 165 meters wide and 110 meters high. It took as long as two days to move the arc of 25,000 tons from the construction site to the installation site above the fourth reactor. The new arc has covered the old sarcophagus for at least 100 years. Now the the construction workers and the engineers can proceed to dismantling the old shelter. The huge cranes will be operated from a safe room, the fragments of the old shelter will be crushed, decontaminated, and trucked out to a radioactive waste storage site. There are many unstable structures inside which can raise radioactive dust if they collapse, but that's only part of the problem. The main problem is that there are no technologies or innovations as of today that could be used to remove all the contents from inside the fourth power unit. The collapsed structures can be removed in some way, but what about the fuel containing corium. How can the remaining nuclear fuel itself be removed? People cannot work there. The radiation inside will not decrease almost at all even within a hundred years. For instance, the half-life period of americium 241 a disintegration product of plutonium-241, is 433 years. Just think of these figures. And the half-life period of plutonium-239 is as long as 24,110 years. During the rectification of the accident's consequences, robots were used in the most contaminated areas, but the Swedish and Japanese robots did not cope with the task. The batteries failed in such a radioactive field, and the electric components simply burned out. In addition to that, the fourth power unit is not a level location. There are very many rooms inside that are locked and filled with debris after the explosion. Besides the great amount of fuel, there's a lot of other waste inside. For instance, about one and a half thousand tons of graphite. The graphite had initially melted during the accident, and now it is already congealed. There are also 
many pipelines and machines, and they are all radioactive, the same as the old sarcophagus itself. It'll take very many years to decontaminate the territory of the Chernobyl NPP, perhaps as long as a hundred years or even more. So it appears that the new protective arc is only the beginning, and nobody knows when it'll all be over. International experts believe that Ukraine must solve the issue of reorganization of the Chernobyl site and of the project financing already now at the global level, otherwise the zone will remain a radioactive burial site for many centuries to come. To sum it up, one could say that the Chernobyl exclusion zone will hardly become a 100% environmentally sound and safe region within 100 years, that the frightening danger signs, fences, and checkpoints will hardly disappear forever. But when the scientists finally find a way to collect all the remaining active nuclear fuel and to transport it to the nuclear waste zone, it's quite possible that Pripyat and Chernobyl will come back to life and become inhabited by relatives of those people who lived in Pripyat before the accident. What do you think? As for me, I believe even if the scientists come to grips with the problem of disposal of the remaining nuclear waste and the exclusion zone becomes as safe as possible for staying there, it'll be better to leave everything as it is now as a memorial for the future generations, a memorial reminding us that there is no peaceful atom anywhere in the world. Well, that's all for now. Hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching.